Hello everyone, it's been a while since I uploaded a video and you might be thinking what in the hell were you doing all this time? Give me the melee video already. But what if I told you I've been working on this video every single day in the last month and hell even before that. Before I start talking about the weapons, I need to make a few things clear. Keep in mind that paused AI in Simulacrum does not take extra damage as it used to that got patched, okay? You're not sure about that? Let me show it to you. Look at this damage number and look at it now see same number melee weapons in warframe are absolutely busted and me telling you that dual skana is better than mk1 bow is not as fun as doing the same thing in primary and secondary categories even the worst weapons of melee category are so strong that they can easily compete and in most cases win against top tier primary and secondaries let me show you something you know Cobra and Crane? I know Cobra and Crane. It's a weapon with almost no crit chance or multiplier and it's mainly impact damage. If you know anything about this game, you know how garbage impact damage is. And yet, with all of that said, when you actually build the weapon and use it against higher level enemies, Yeah, it's freaking strong. What a surprise. Aside from that, we also have yet another problem here, and that is stances. If your weapon has a good stance, even with mediocre stats, you can have some ridiculous performance. In most cases, stance is pretty balanced and stats actually matter. And in some other cases, no matter how good your stats are, you are not gonna get good performance out of it. So, I will completely ignore stances and give you the best each category has to offer. At a certain mastery rank of course so remember this when you see a huge difference between categories okay okay quick note on heavy attacks i will talk about them at the end of the video keep in mind the builds i'm showing are meant to deal the most dps possible i am keen on my words though i am making high damage per second builds and not just big number builds those two are quite different putting stuff like weeping wounds on crit weapons will give you bigger damage numbers after you hit an enemy multiple times, but it won't give you better DPS as the time it takes to deal that damage to every other new target outscales the damage itself, at least at levels below 1000. Condition overload and prime pressure point. Having both on most builds is 100% mandatory. Condition overload is not a replacement for pressure point and there is no other mod that can give you a better output. Losing prime pressure point is more than losing just one damage type. So yeah, definitely not gonna remove pressure point. As I have already established, melee is very freaking strong. Quite frankly, even going for most DPS is quite a dumb idea. For my own personal use, I use this build on pretty much everything. I want to keep that attack speed on because it makes the weapon more usable in a real game scenario. Watch out not to be consumed with damage numbers and just have fun. It's a game after all. So I will follow the same structure as my primary and secondary videos, meaning that I will show weapon builds without Catalyst and Forma up to Mastery Rank 7. From 8 we will go all out. Mastery Rank 0 Fang A dual dagger that you can buy off market for 20k credit. Sadly it stands polarity, fits national piranha, which new players don't have access to. So we will be using Sinking Talons instead. At least it has an innate polarity which helps a bit with modding. Dual Scana, a dual sword that you can craft as soon as you reach Mars because you need Morphics to craft it. I have only talked about two weapons so far, but stance privileges are already showing. Scana, now this is a sword. Initially, I was gonna show you a build without a stance because... <laughs> but then I was reminded that you will be given a free Iron Phoenix upon completion of Mars Junction. And what do you know, that stance has a guaranteed 300% slash proc on the first move of its neutral combo. So, you know, you can do this. What a great start. Silva and Aegis. Now, crafting a Silva and Aegis at mastery rank 0 almost feels like cheating. This weapon is a lot stronger than everything else in this mastery rank. Though, to craft it, you need a dojo. And if you have a dojo, that means you have a clan. And if you have a clan, you can ask your clanmates to give you a fever strike and the final harbinger, Lekta. 
Now, this one is a whip. It's a whip that you can buy straight up from the market. If you have any toxin mods, put them on so you get corrosive for armored units and put cold on to get magnetic or shielded units. The whips are known for one good thing, and that is wide strikes that hit multiple targets at once. Mastery rank one, comma. Now, here we have an odd case. It's a machete with two innate Madurai or V polarities, which is so good. If you can get your hands on a toxin mod, this weapon will probably outperform quite a few weapons, even at higher mastery ranks. But even without it, it's a very strong weapon. Dual Kama. Now, given how much I praise Kama, you might think that two Kamas would be much better, given that this weapon literally asks you to craft two Kamas and then mix them together. Sadly, in reality, this thing is a step below Kama at pure damage, but what it has is a better stance which is much faster and has better usability. Glaive. Now the only way to get this weapon is from Nightwing. And its stance is not something Master Rank 1 would have. But there is no way around it. Without stance and proper mod, will not even be worth thinking about. So, if you want to use this weapon, either pay about 5 plat to get those two mods, or ask a friend. Mastery Rank 2. Dual Zoran. Here we have one of few weapons below Mastery Rank 8 that we can't get good damage output through status effects. And we have to resort to using crit mods. You might be wondering why I'm trying so hard not to use crit mods. Let me show you the reason. Say this is the build. We could add a critical chance mod and give ourselves an additional 30% chance to triple our damage. Or, or, or hear me out here, we could do this. I hope you can see my point. Sindo, I for one love this weapon, and only half of that is because both it and its prime are goddamn solid weapons. The other half is because with a measly 40 plat, you can turn it into this. So yeah. Orthos, oh my god, finally a solid pole arm to mention, and look at this performance, it's beautiful. Orthos and its prime variant are my favorite pole arms in game. Mastery rank 3 Heat Blades family. I'm gonna bunch up Heat Sword, Dual Heat Sword, and Heat Dagger into one. Their stats are very similar. Their call of fame is Heat Damage, which they don't have by the way, but to be fair, they have a guaranteed Heat proc on slam attacks, which in this case makes up for it, but still a sin that a weapon called Heat Sword doesn't actually have Heat Damage on it. So Heat procs will almost double your damage against armored enemies, which is super duper good. Galatine, a heavy blade that the only thing I need to tell you is that it doesn't fit in the screen. How many weapons can say that? Its stats are solid and I recommend it. Prova. This weapon honestly wouldn't be on the list because Kama with a corrosive setup beats it. But given that it is still above average in this mastery rank, I think it deserves to be here. Something about shocking my enemies to death is really interesting to me. Tanbo, a pole arm with 25% status chance and 1 in 8 V polarity which allows it to make viral. You can see where I'm going with this. This thing cannot just out DPS Kama but also deal damage in a much wider area. Anku. This will be the first side I'm gonna talk about. In general, this category is so badass. It's really a shame that we only have 5 weapons in this category. Akan Brunt, the heavier, grinier looking cousin of Selva and Aegis. It's used by Teal Rigor and it's a goddamn solid weapon. You can also do this. <laughs> Cronin. If you can get your hands on a Sovereign Outcast, this weapon will be a pretty nice weapon. It's not gonna out DPS Tanbo or Kama, it is enough to get it on this list. Also extra points for fashion, god damn look at this thing. Broken War, a weapon just gifted to you at the end of the war within, which you can do as early as Mastery Rank 3.
it comes with a pre-installed organ catalyst. That alone makes this weapon something you would definitely want to use till Master Rank 8. But turns out, this weapon is the best below Master Rank 14 sword in the game, making the entire category of swords useless in comparison. I would completely skip all the swords, but since not everybody does that quest this early, I will still talk about other swords before Master Rank 8. Mastery Rank 4 Zorus. Its damage is alright, but what really makes me put it on this list is HOLY MOTHER OF VISUAL EFFECTS LOOK AT THIS THING! And don't even get me started on the sound design. It's just too much. Nekana. The weapon of choice for those who want to look cool and kick ass at the same time. If you could get your hands on a decisive judgment, it is a better stance. But Blind Justice is a close second, so it's totally fine if you don't have one. Ether Reaper, the first in Ether Blade's family, sporting 20% in both crit and status. This blade is truly ahead of its time. Highly recommend it. Tipido. You might be thinking, wait a second, Tipido isn't Mastery Rank 4, it's Mastery Rank 3. And that is when I would tell you, why don't you try and craft it then? And when you try and craft it, you will notice that it requires a bow to craft. And bow is mastery rank 4. So yeah. Mastery rank 5. Okina. Basically, just press E twice towards an enemy and they will die from 4 slash rocks. If you lack the stance, it's 1 to 2 flat, you can buy it or just ask a friend. Dark Split Sword. This weapon can turn from a dual sword to a heavy blade if you just change the stance. But performance wise, dual sword is all you need. Jet Kitag. Ragdoll. Do I need to tell you more? If you need to know, its performance is pretty okay. But do not underestimate the Ragdoll, it's a very useful CC. Gizal Machete. If you plan on using this thing, make sure you also use Jin at the same time. Every time Jin does a fatal attraction, you will get 25% corrosive buff for 30 seconds. Gotta say, it's pretty nice. I thought Tombo was pretty strong, but this thing on a whole new level. Bow Prime. Bet you didn't see this one coming. Bow Prime is a solid staff, but sadly, it is pure impact damage. And the staff stance has no slashes. It would be fine if no other staff had massive slash damage. Just a shame that Tipido Prime exists. Though it's pretty okay performance, as long as you don't compare it with slash based weapons. Also, if you were wondering how it performs with a catalyst, here it is. Meyer. If we were to look at Meyer's damage output compared to other weapons in this category, it's extremely good. Just a shame that Broken War exists. Though, if you haven't done the quest, I highly recommend Meyer. Adorax. This weapon. It hurts to see it. It has 25% in both crit and status with a ridiculously high 3.0 crit damage. If we were to put the same numbers on a weapon in Nikana, Dual Sword, Polearm, etc, etc, it would have been one of, if not the strongest weapon in that category. But alas, it's a whip, and whip stances are GARBAGE, at least in my opinion. But yeah, this thing is not great. But if you're a fan of whips, this is either the best or the second best whip in the game. And yes, I know that doesn't say much given that we only have 5 whips in the game, but bear with me. Sky Ajati. Another weapon to destroy another category. Great. Sky Jati is given to you at the end of Sacrifice Quest with a pre-installed Orkin Catalyst. Anyway, don't be fooled with those Umbra polarities. 
contrary to popular belief, most Umbral mods are garbage. The only two that I think are truly worth it are Umbral Intensify and Sacrificial Steel. Even if it's one of these two that you want to use, 9 out of 10, you need to form them multiple times and they will kill build variety. So I do not like using them. Mastery rank 6. Karis. Finally, a dagger with great performance. I just like this thing a lot because of its innate toxin damage. Dual Icker. It's slightly weaker than Dark Split Sword against armor, as it's not mostly puncture damage, but against anything else, it's a step up from Split Sword. Skoliak. In general, this is a worse Adorax, but in a new player friendly build, it will outperform Adorax, as it has higher base and attack speed, and they matter a lot more than crit stats. Twin Basalt. Even though it's quite a pain in the ass to build, I think it is well worth it. Having heat damage on top of full physical and the sky high 40% status chance, it's about the best dual sword you can get your hands on at this mastery rank. Sorata and or Halicar. In Glaive category at this mastery rank, we have Sorata and Halicar. If it was me, I would just go Sorata, but to be fair, Halicar is slightly better against armor, but look at this and then look at this. Pupasis, an infested themed polearm with innate viral damage. Glorious. I could go lower on 90 mod and put status chance on instead, but what's the point when I'm gonna kill my enemies so fast there is no need for status chance. Cost assist, innate corrosive damage, high status chance, and the highest base in Psy category. What else could you ask for? Even though wiki and the weapon description say that it has a gimmick, somehow it doesn't. Or maybe it does and it's just bugged and doesn't work. Endura, would you look at this, a rapier. It's pretty rare to see one of these, given that we only have 3 rapiers in game. They have a very unique problem. Good stats, very good stance, and strong base. The problem is, they are so narrow. Their AoE capability is horrible. But if we are talking narrow, more like single target damage, these are one of the best we have. Hyrudo, well well well. You want lifesteal? You want damage? You want to kick your enemies to the afterlife? Hyrudo is the weapon for you. You might be wondering why I'm going full crit, as I said earlier that it usually gives less damage, because our lifesteal is on our crits. So yeah, we're locked into crits, boys. Broken Scepter. Thankfully, this is Mastery Rank 7, and we will step into strong weapon territory soon. So this free staff won't be a problem with its built-in catalyst. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a good weapon. From here on, I will show builds with Forma and Catalyst. And no, we are not done with Master Rank 7 yet, because there is a whole weapon category in Master Rank 7, so I gotta show the best they have to offer. Tatsu, a weapon with low crit stats, high status, and more than 3 damage types, which include Slash. That's basically the definition of a Weeping Wounds weapon. Though, beware, if you lose your combo, say goodbye to your damage. When I want to use it, either I give it attack speed buffs or swap heat for quickening as the weapon is so slow. Though you will lose quite a lot of DPS if you remove the heat. Pennant. So, this weapon is slow to the point I would never use it. That is what I would tell you if it didn't have a gimmick. The attack speed problem can be solved simply by getting 12x combo and then killing one enemy with a heavy attack. Though it must be a straight up kill and not a slash kill. That alone would make this weapon amazing, but we're not done. The buff lasts 45 seconds, which is a lot, but it also happens to stack with itself. I couldn't find any data on how many times it can stack, so I did my own research and it stacks up to 3 times. 50% times 3 is 150% extra attack speed, which is twice as much as Berserker. And funny enough, in a real mission, it's not hard to do at all. 
especially and especially if you have a frame that can clump up enemies for you. So yeah, this weapon is an absolute abomination and I love how it makes melee more interactive. Mastery rank 8 Mios If you feed Mios the blood of your enemies, it will grant you power. Watch out not to be consumed. Rakta Dark Dagger Its performance is great, but what really makes me use this weapon is the gimmick. Getting shields and over shields is very nice, especially if you have an Arcane Aegis. Using this on a Warframe that can give your shields damage reduction is a surefire way to get yourself an invincibility button. So yeah, have fun. Dual Ether. Folk, this is my most used melee in game. I've been using it since Mastery Rank 8 and I absolutely love this thing. It's not the best dual sword. But it's pretty close. Falcor. Remember when I praised Zoris for its visual effects? Well, call me a playlist stuck on loop because it's exactly the same thing all over again. And for stats, it's the best glaive you can get your hands on so far, but compared to everything else at this mastery rank, it's not good. Sancti Magistar. This one wouldn't be in the list if it didn't have a ridiculously good gimmick attached to it. And funny enough, the gimmick is bugged, but this time it's bugged in our favor. The gimmick is meant to give you 5% lifesteal on your heavy attacks, but what it does is it gives you 5% lifesteal on all of your attacks after you do one heavy attack. So yeah. I can make many frames a lot tankier if I use this thing. Using this weapon, my Titania can survive level 150 heavies like a champ. Did I mention that this thing not only heals you, but also heals everything else in a 15 meter radius around you? And yes, that includes defense operatives. Sindo Prime, basically a repeat of what I said on Sindo. It's almost funny, melee is so strong that in my book, how it looks is more important than its stats. Its stats are goddamn solid, but what really makes me use it is that glorious skin. Prova Vandal, a lone tenno once said, this thing is a corpus cricket stick and that was all the reason i needed to put this thing in the list statistically speaking it's a flat out inferior machete wraith it's funny too because this thing loses to machete wraith even in riven disposition guess having meme status ain't a benefit after all hate this weapon is the second best psi in the game by a very very small amount and yes, I know we only have 5 of them, but god damn if it ain't strong. It almost feels like it is fueled by the hatred of Tenno, so watch out not to be consumed with it. Oma. One thing, Sovereign Outcast, aka, press E 3 times and your enemy dies. And as if that wasn't enough, it has a gimmick that will spread status effects that you put on your target. So you put viral on one enemy and every other enemy around it gets viral. So you can see how that can be called a massive advantage. The only thing that stops this from being one of the best weapons in game is that it lacks puncture. And no stance in game has guaranteed puncture procs. Gunson, a war fan. We only have two of these in game so far. It's pretty interesting too, the stance is solid and the idea of using what seems to be a harmless fan to make my enemy's biggest piece their ear is really interesting to me. Quasis, Zaku's signature weapon. 
Compared to Gunson, it's higher DPS but lower usability cause it's slower. If you plan on augmenting the attack speed via external buffs, it can outdo Gunson. But without them, it's a bit too slow to be good. It has a very interesting gimmick that I will talk about in heavy attack section. Secure Alecta. Whips are not known for their high damage and it shows, but the AoE potential is quite high. I for one think we need a better whip stance and that is the main thing holding them back. Adorax. Okay, I know it's Master Rank 5, but the whip category ends here and I wanted to show it to you with a catalyst. Broken War. Allow me to show you the real power of a sword killer. Mastery rank 9 Keratinos Let's have a checklist Highest base in claw category by a significant amount, check High status chance, check Innate viral damage making it capable of stacking corrosive viral and heat, check Having slash damage, check Ability to increase its range by 3 meters, check The only thing it doesn't have is a whole lot of crit And saying it manages without is a gross understatement Path assist an infested glaive with all the damage you would ever want. Just one teeny tiny problem. Its attack speed is literally the lowest in the game. It's slow to the point that it's unusable without fixing the problem. So, I resorted to my last option, Primed Fury. Increasing my attack speed by 55% and making this weapon usable. Though I guess if you have an arcane strike or other external buffs, those are better solution to the problem and you can keep your 60-60 heat on. Fewer axe rate. Even though this one is not a top tier damage dealer by any means, being able to make seismic movement and shock waves with your hands is something I really like about this weapon category. Volness, being the only slash based hammer in the game, this thing has some pretty interesting stuff going for it. It doesn't beat something like a frag or prime at DPS, but it surely is more usable by itself. Legion, the best pole arm in the game at least in the damage output department. Its gimmick is whenever you get a headshot, you will get plus 100% toxin damage and 15% attack speed. It's a close fight between it and Orthos Prime, but I believe Legion is the true victor of this battle. After all, it's not at 1 out of 5 disposition for no reason. Prisma Dual Cleavers, truly a weapon for a butcher, quite literally, and it performs like it. After all, that 3 times crit damage is the highest you can get in a melee weapon, and it's not just for show. Mastery Rank 10 Fan Prime This weapon is one of two things. Either a 2 move kill with gnashing piranha or a wide bloodbath with spinning needle. Take your pick. In reality, spinning needle is a flat out better stance though. Twin Croaker, second best dual sword in the game. It's not by a lot either, but its attack speed is the reason it ain't getting that number one spot. We will talk about number one later on.
Glaive Prime. Having both the highest DPS and glaives and the most beautiful model, this is the one to rule them all. Strofa. This weapon is everything that should not exist. I cannot stand the sight of this weapon. Such a bad design choice. Heavy attack weapons in general pay a hefty amount of DPS loss for the extremely high burst damage they get. Gunblades being able to get headshot multipliers pay the price by being extremely narrow and for the most part single target weapons. And then we have Strofa being an AoE machine and unlike other heavy attack builds it doesn't rely on slashes to kill. It is an outright kill. Can't wait for it to get nerfed. Destreza Prime Talking about stylish weapons, Destreza Prime is a great addition to your golden collection. Also, holy mother of crit stats! It has the highest crit chance and base damage among all weapons with 3 times crit damage. Reaper Prime, the best Psy in the game. I don't know what else one would want. High crit, status, base, attack speed, high slash damage, it got all you want. Kogaki Prime, I like this weapon for so many reasons. First of all, it comes with 3 innate V polarities. Just by this alone, I will count this the best weapon in game. And being a sparring, it has one of the best animations in game, going from kicking your enemy teeth in to launching yourself both feet at their kidneys. I also forgot, it has the highest DPS in its category. Tipedo Prime being the slash beast of this category and having 24% crit chance and status chance and 2.4 times multiplier, this is the best staff you can get your hands on. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm using Clashing Forest instead of Flailing Branch, ask yourself which is better, a Flailing Stick or a Clashing Forest. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Cobra and Crane. Well, 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 what do you know? I actually pulled a sneaky on you, making you think this was a weak weapon. But in reality, it's not. It's definitely not. It's not the best in Sword and Shield category, but it's definitely not far behind. The other two beating it are Silva and Aegis and Sigma and Octantis. But since Sigma and Octantis ain't easy to get, I'll have to mention this one. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering how this thing can deal so much slash damage, let me remind you, stance privileges. Mastery rank 11. Jad Kusar. This thing is pretty much a textbook definition of a crit weapon. Having 35% crit chance and 2.5 times multiplier, it is as good as a crit weapon gets. I really like the model, especially the chainsaw sound effect and the big ass blade it has. But seek though, that's not how Jad Kusar looks. That's Cora Deluxe blade and whip skin. Did I stutter? This is how Jet Kusar looks, no questions asked. Am I making myself clear? Okay, 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 no need to get violent, no need to get violent, okay, got it. So, as I was saying, it's okay, but it's not the best in this category. It's definitely something though. Nami Skyla Prime, talking about the best weapon in category. Nami Skyla Prime is the best dual sword you can get your hands on. It's not exactly a crit weapon though, that means for maximum DPS, we need our weeping wounds on. Machete Wraith, well, what do you know, yet another top ranking weapon. Machete Wraith is the best machete you can get. Exact same thoughts as Nami Scala Prime towards stats. Machete stances don't have any useful slash proc, so the more area you cover, the more DPS you get. The forward attack has no less than 3 360 degree attacks, so that's all we're gonna do. Telos Boltes. If I had to tell you one weapon in the entire game that I would consider capable of dealing the highest amount of DPS, it would be Telos Boltes. 
its gimmick is just way too powerful. Being able to clump up enemies like this and being a Tanfa capable of using Sovereign Outcast, it's a bit too much. Thankfully, it has a 8 second cooldown on its gimmick and it's not spammable. If you try and use it again before the 8 second ends, you will do an AoE lift status instead of a vacuum like effect and you will reset the timer to 6 seconds. Mastery Rank 12 Seti Lacera. Now this is the best weapon in its category. One look at its stats and any sane player can tell you that this is ridiculous. There is no bad stats on this. Attack speed is high, crit stats are good enough, status is ridiculously high, base damage is high, and we also have additional damage types. This is like everything you could ask for. If blade and whip stance wasn't a bit awkward, this would break game balance. Even though it's annoying, it does work as a balancing mechanic. Charist Prime Turns out having the highest base, crit chance, crit damage, and status chance in a weapon category makes you the best weapon in that category. What a surprise, am I right? As you can see, I'm using Pointed Wind and not Stinging Thorns, even though that stance has 4 slash procs in it. The reason for that is, if I use Stinging Thorns, this weapon will pretty much be a single target weapon. And given how slow this weapon is, and it's relatively low range, I really rather not do that. And not just that, I'm willing to sacrifice two other mods to put attack speed and extra range on. If you want to use external buffs to give it attack speed, feel free to change the build. Teko Prime Would you look at this? Finally, a slash based fist weapon. Even though Gaia's Tragedy has more DPS on paper, in reality Seismic Palm is what I pick because it doesn't send my enemies flying and I can actually hit them. Nikana Prime In a category called Nikana that most of its members include the word Nikana in their name, funny enough, the best weapon is Nikana Prime. We are just overflowing with creativity here. The highest DPS you can get is Decisive Judgment, but if you want my opinion, I really rather use Blind Justice. It's funny how Blind Justice slide attack is a 4 hit combo, while other stances slide attacks are just 1 hit. Frag or Prime. When you look at this thing's stats, you will notice that it has a 40% crit chance. With just the Blood Rush, we will have guaranteed red crit. You might think with this much crit, it would be better to completely forget about the status and go full crit mods. But no, that is not the case. Using Viral Multiplication is still a better option and Condition Overload still comes into play because before your target dies, they usually get about 3 damage types on them, so Condition Overload works pretty nicely. Orthos Prime I would say this is the best polearm if Legion didn't exist. This is still a lot faster and has more usability, so this would be my pick, but it is not the best polearm in DPS department. Silva and Aegis Prime Basically, the best sword and shield you can get your hands on aside from login rewards, since Sigma and Octantis is better. I will keep the condition overload on as we have impact and slash from stance. Mastery Rank 13 Galatine Prime Even though Galatine doesn't have the highest DPS in its category, I still think it's the best heavy blade in the game. Fight me. Cronin Prime the highest DPS in its category, being one of the most popular weapons in the game. So I'm not even gonna bother explain how and why, you know it all already. Mastery rank, okay, 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 for that one new player that doesn't know why this is so popular, let me go over it. 
Sovereign Outcast giving you 4 guaranteed 200% slash procs on its third move. Having 34% status chance and high attack speed makes this a slash monster. Usually on such a weapon with over 30% status chance we have low or very low crit stats. But this weapon has 22% crit chance with a normal multiplier. Surprisingly best DPS comes from organ shattering and not weeping wounds because we already get a lot of slashes. If it didn't have sovereign outcast then weeping wounds might have actually been better but as is organ shatter is the way to go. Mastery rank 14 Venka Prime. Look at this thing. It's beautiful, it's powerful, and it's just elegant. And that passive is quite nice, being able to reach 13x combo multiplier. We reach 262% crit chance instead of the usual 243 with this base crit chance. Obviously, it's a crit weapon, and we're gonna use Organ Shatter. Gram Prime, highest DPS in its category, but not the best weapon in its category. It's just way, way too slow to beat Galatine at a realistic DPS. Aside from that, it's pretty much a weapon best explained by Heavy Blade. Ninkondi Prime. Being the only nunchuck in the game that I will even talk about, its performance is on par with other top tier weapons and it is the most fashionable weapon in the game. Fight me. On this specific weapon, neutral combo is not what you wanna do. What you wanna do is heavy neutral. You know block plus E? Yeah that one. It's flat out better. And if you want it to move forward, go for heavy forward. If you don't care about pesky stuff like damage numbers and you wanna look as cool as possible, you can totally swap Weeping Wounds for a 90% electricity mod and enjoy the beautiful visual effects. Pangolin Prime, the last sword. Being the sole survivor of sword category after the Fire Nation, um, I mean after the Broken Wars attack. The best sword in the game. And you gotta admit, it looks pretty nice. Heavy attack setups. Now let's talk about heavy attack setups. Heavy attack setups are meant to deal as much burst damage in one move as possible at the cost of DPS, but in return, you will be completely free from stuff like blood rush, condition overload, or weeping wounds. So from the total of 24 weapon categories that we have in the game, I consider 11 of them to be in theory capable of making good heavy attack builds. I will be using this build most of the time, keep in mind that it's not the ideal build and the ideal build is this, but I can't be bothered to form on my weapons two more times just to get like 5% more deeps for a heavy attack setup that I won't use often. If I use another build on a weapon, I will show it. We will be testing on corrupted heavy gunners, and for those the ideal damage type is corrosive. The heavy attack build is meant to deal a lot of burst damage, so we want one shots, we don't want DPS at all. So with that out of the way, let's do this, claws. For this category I will be talking about two weapons, Venka Prime and Kratinos. These two weapons have different heavy attack moves. Venka is like a punch, pretty narrow but pretty high numbers. But Kratinos is like a whirlwind and with the amount of hits it has, using 60 mod is actually better on it. At the end of the day, Venka is the superior option. But Kratinos was interesting enough to be worth mentioning. Daggers. For this one I'll be using Karis Prime. Be careful that the slash proc is mostly to your right so position yourself against your enemies with that in mind. Yeah. 
Dual daggers. For this one, we will be using Fang Prime. Due to this category's low range, even though the damage is okay-ish, I don't recommend it for a heavy attack build. Gunblades, already talked about it, go to the time shown if you missed it. Nikanas, for this one, obviously we will be using Nikana Prime. The damage output is quite nice, but I have an issue with it. When you want to use the heavy attack, it moves you forward, and not just by a bit. It is enough to annoy me. Negative usability points for that. Rapiers. For this one, we will be using Destreza Prime. It's basically a straight line in front of you. It's not bad, but not my favorite for sure. Size. For this one, we will be using Reaper Prime. It's easily one of the best in heavy attack setups, not because its damage is the highest, no. It's because the hit itself is so wide and it will hit a lot of enemies. Two-handed Nikanas. Remember when I said Reaper is one of the best because of its wide attack? Now Pennant is the best because its heavy attack move is a 360 degree attack. Also, remember its gimmick? Yeah, that also boosts heavy attack wind up. So have fun killing everything you encounter and getting faster and faster as you do. Tanfas. I don't know why, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get a consistent one shot with neither Cronin nor Boltace. So I think we should pass on this category. After all, you can just press E three times to kill an enemy. War fans. For this category, we will be using Quasis, which has a, let's call it an interesting gimmick. When you use a heavy attack, aside from the normal damage and hit, you also get 12 projectiles that also deal guaranteed slash and massive damage. You can aim them to be headshots or use them to hit multiple targets in a row as they have punch through. Though they don't act like usual projectiles with stuff like mag or void bubbles, they go straight for the center and then disappear. Did I mention if you land all the projectiles from its heavy attack, you out damage every other heavy attack build in the game, at least in single target damage? Yes, even Strofa. By the way, having the highest single target damage doesn't make it the best heavy attack setup, but gotta admit, it's quite something. Whips. It's a bit sad, but the only way to get as much damage as other categories with a whip is to get a headshot, which is pretty hard and inconsistent. This whole category is just a sad story, to be honest. We need a prime whip. Do it, D. Do it. Hello guys, uh, it's been a while. My clan and discord are open for you to join. If you want to join, hit me up on discord. This is my tag. I've been working on this project pretty hard, it took the life out of me because I had to do pretty much every single step at least twice and five times at the worst case scenario. I had to record the clips five different times because they got corrupted once and once the format was wrong. The other time there was a watermark on that I didn't notice. So yeah, it's been a journey. And with the university up, I won't have much time to make videos. So best case scenario, two videos per month, Worst case scenario, it'll take me over a month to make one. This specific project was so hard to do. It took me so much time and effort because, uh, let me remind you, I spent 10,000 platinum to get everything needed for this series, primary, secondary, and melee in total. So yeah, being a free-to-play player, that took some time. You can see that it takes some time to get that much plat and then don't forget the format and stuff. So yeah, sorry for the delay, but yeah, couldn't do it any faster. I will probably be making smaller videos because these things are just killing me. I gotta make smaller videos for a while and yeah, hopefully the next big project will be after my midterms. It'll probably take another month or two before I can focus on another big project like this because it's quite hard to pull off something like this. Alrighty then, see you in another video and bye-bye.